What's up, y'all? Dragon Ray Gaming, aka Rayquaza, and today we're going to talk about what Xbox Game Studios or Microsoft Studios, wherever you want to call it, Xbox Go Green. Uh, what can you guys do going into 2023? Because listen, y'all, there's a lot of folks that's saying this year is like 2023 is gonna be the year of Xbox, which I believe it will be the year of Xbox. And there's a lot of people that are saying 2023, if Xbox doesn't bring it, we're done. Listen, guys, I'm not saying this as an Xbox fanboy. I'm not saying this is a Sony pony. I'm not saying this as no Nintendo nerd. You guys know what this is about. I'm not an Xbox. I'm a gamer that loves games. I got all the systems. I play everything. I still don't got no Steam Deck though, but I don't play a lot of Steam games, but that hopefully we can change that in the future. But that's besides the point. Anyway, we're going to talk about like I was going back on point. Uh there's a lot of people that have zero faith in Xbox. I understand that. I understand that. These past couple generations from the Xbox One, the Xbox One X, Xbox Series X and S. People they've been going, they've been going up. But this past couple years, these two years that had passed. From the you know what xbox really hadn't came out with a lot of stuff not compared to sony but you guys gotta understand they're different business models different business models they have different strengths and they have different weaknesses they're not the same entity they're different continuities in the same genre if you guys know what i'm talking about anyway i'm gonna break this up into a couple things in this video the first one i'm gonna talk about Going to 2023 Xbox, what they really need to do is they really need to come out with games. Console exclusivity brings games. Doesn't matter. I'm for me, I'm gonna say this for beta. I don't say it doesn't matter how you get it, it's how you get it to the console. You guys can say buying acquisitions is meaningless, but it brings exclusivity to your console, which is fine. That's what you want, exclusivity to the console. You have to get the games. We know there's going to be delays upon delays. The you know what had a lot of delays. People had a lot of delays. Starfield, Redfall. You gotta say them both. They've both been delayed. And, and shoot, speaking of Redfall's case, there's a rumor going around it's been delayed another six weeks. But I can't confirm or deny that. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't heard anything in the grapevine. Stalker 2 is coming out, which is great. There's some other games that are coming out. However, before the delay and everything, there was games in development like Fable. I don't know when Fable's coming out. That's as far as I remember, that was in development hell. Hellblade 2 is looking promising. And again, looking promising is another thing that I always talk about. Quality is subjective, but we're not here to talk about that. So going into 2023, Xbox needs a lot of games. And there are, there's credible rumors from Jess Gordon and some other sources, even me, that they're going to have a showcase earlier this year, maybe with the first quarter. But it needs to be ASAP for a lot of people. Me, I get the games when I get them. I have other stuff to play in the meantime. I'm not a platform. Uh -uh, I don't do that. And before you guys start coming at me for wearing the green of the Xbox gear, this is just for the video. I always say this. This is just for the video where I represent Xbox Game Studios because I like Xbox Studios. I got my God War hammer in the back. I play PlayStation all the time. I, I'm not a PlayStation focused channel. I play it when I have to and give the news out when I have to. Nintendo, we'll talk about Nintendo. I'll play games, but they're so ass backwards. I don't even want to deal with the content, man. I'm not getting DMCA no more. That, that, uh -uh. We're not, I'm not doing that no more. So ultimately, Avowed. We got to see what's going on with Avowed, people. We have to see what's going on with Avowed this year. Even for me. I love uh, third world, third person, first person RPGs. Avowed is made by some of the old Bethesda crew, if I remember correctly. Kirkbride. Stuff like that. Is it Kirkbride? I don't know. Maybe get my lore and stuff mixed up. But we have to see what's Avowed. We have to see what that other game was ever while. We have to finally see what that is. Because when we saw it originally, that was just a trailer. It was just a trailer, people. Gears, Forza, Minecraft, that stuff is a staple. We'll always see that. They're not going anywhere. And then we'll see some maybe title revivals. We'll see the console exclusive for Kojima, even though I'm not really a Kojima fan. I like one, one of his games. That's it. I wasn't really a Metal Gear Solid guy. I like Snake Eater. Snake Eater was great. I love Snake Eater. 
Death Stranding wasn't my thing. I couldn't get into it. Maybe I'll give it another shot next year. You know, who knows, man? Who knows? Maybe I'll be a series on my channel. But anyway, the same about PlayStation. And we have to see some other unknown titles from Xbox. They're gonna be heavily invested in indie games like they always do. Indies can, you know, indies have been a whole lot more popular to the average gamer than to the hardcore gamer. I'm sick of seeing these motherfucker fanboys saying, oh, we want, for consoles, we want first party. Listen, people, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this one more time. Indies in the casual market is the standard right now. It is. You see people, you see people play single player hardcore games all you want to, but you see motherfuckers play indies out the ass now. You, you see it all the time. And they're being supported. It brings the eyes. That's what you want for Xbox. If they're bringing the eyes to your perspective and console. First party, they're always going to be there. But it takes time. Even for me, Halo was a dud to an extent. The gameplay is solid. Story, eh, sort could be better, to be honest with you. They just, like for a live service game for Halo, the content drought was too much. It was too long. I play at every event. Even the Forge thing, I dabbled in Forge a little bit, which is great. But you need to pivot that motion, what you're doing with Halo, and put it to the forefront. The ma custom map browser is great. The maps are incredible. Have some special events sprinkled throughout, make more content for it. But the content drought for a live service game for Halo was a bit too much for people. It was a bit too much. You know, even for me, I played a couple games, like like I said last year, I, this coming year, I wanted to play Halo over the rest of the year. I didn't want to play Call of Duty like that. Call of Duty's fine, I said I beat the story, play multiplayer, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty solid at it, but I really wanted to play Halo. You know, Halo is just, as right now, as Halo stands to me, it's just improving. You know, but then again, for a lot of people, first impressions is all that matters. You know, just like when people talk about Starfield, Starfield, Starfield. First press all, I was blown away when I saw Starfield. But you guys gotta understand, I do a lot more research than you. And going from what they used to be and going what to do now, it's incredible. Incredible. It's night and day. But I love those kind of games. It's not for you. 30 frames per second? I'm going to say it right now. I will play 30 frames per second over 60 for cinematic games. For cinematic games, like this 60 FPS, it just throws me off. I'm not, I don't feel immersed in the game. Even though, oh yeah, I'm doing 60 or maybe 120 frames now, but it throws me off. I, I don't know what it is. It gives me a fucking headache sometimes. Have you ever seen those movies like, here's a perfect example, Infinity War. When I went to see Infinity War in the theaters, the frame rate for that movie was ridiculous. Ridiculous, it was it was so high. Like, no, 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 it was, it was already in movie theaters, but the Blu-ray release, release, it was so ridiculous. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this? It looks so fake to me. I want to see the ridges. I want to see the graininess. I want to see that. This pristine shit don't work with me. Smooth like butter, it looks fucking trash to me, dude. I don't like it, it throws me the fuck off. It's probably why I didn't like Halo Infinite's multiplayer for that little bit, but I got used to that. But I was like, you know, that's a pure combat game. Pure combat game, yeah, not cinematic, no, give me 30, I don't care. Anyway, back to the topics in hand. Xbox and Easter games. And they need to do something with Game Pass, with the because like people saying man people play game pass for the for the price but you don't own your games most, most of the time what you can do people that use game pass there needs to be better perks for game pass even though they have enough games quality stuff yeah and you're gonna see stuff go in and out which is fine they're gonna make game pass more appealing to people which they probably are which is their model like they said this their model that's their baby it saved xbox since it saved Xbox, they've, they've even admitted they've reached their plateau, which is probably correct. You reach your plateau. Okay, this is one thing. We'll have it in video standards like this. We'll say like this. Say like you have 20 million subscribers. Look, let's give them a rough estimate. Say Xbox Game Pass has 20 million subscribers. Okay, 20 million, 20 million consistent subscribers that actually use your system. 
okay. If you can have a forever 20 million, that's still good. 20 million is good. You want more, but it's good. But as long as it's consistent, consistency is the key. If you bring the games, you can make it consistent. Unlike other platforms, you, you rise and low. But if it's consistent, you still make your margins. You can get more, you can get low, but it's always consistent. That's what you want. I've already been trying, like I said again, they're already trying another uh, $2.99 or $4.99 Game Pass. I'm not a fan of that shit with ads. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. Get that out of here. But for other people, if that's what you can support, it can bring more people in, which is what you want. It'll bring more people in, which is great. You know, that that's awesome. That'll increase your subscribers from the lower money price point, but you have ads. That'll increase it in a general sense, but it's still, you know, it's still around the same margin. You can get more people to grow your, grow your game pass. But that's also a detriment to certain things like uh Oh, wow Let, let's see what let's see um what can we talk about what can we talk about yes let's talk about the elephant in the room the xbox series s okay i don't have a problem with the s i have a series x i don't want i don't want the lower system give me the higher one that's me that's me always give me the higher system give me the collectors give me all that there's one detriment that certain people need to get over you know what i mean like me i'm not gonna go for the lower system however developers the series s is a bottleneck to some and it's a great thing for others like they said it's a standalone to get you into the next gen console space because they're not gonna be because they're literally it's still better than what they used to do you see what i'm saying because eventually they're gonna cut off the one in the x but they're specifically probably going to turn that into a cloud gaming system. You use it as a modem to stream games that's not on your console that's weaker to use your games, which is great. But if you want that physical market to stay intact, I mean physical market like for the, if some come with disc, some come with the, the digital, you know what I mean? Like if you still want that better power that can run better, that you can download and use it on your console or use a disc for the Series X. You have the systems in place. You have the systems in place that you can play a better quality version of your game. Even though it's not the best, even though it's not the dirt bottom tier Xbox One VCR box, I'll say it, it was a VCR box or the Xbox One X. I have those over there, I have them both. You don't have to use those no more unless it's a specific streaming device, which is fine. But the Series S is either going to be, it's keep it a buck, people have been turning them into emulators. Yes, they have. I haven't. I don't do that. They turn them into emulators, but it's not as strong as the Series X. You'll have other companies and video game publishers, you know, video game makers, studios, they'll probably skip out on the Series S because that's one thing there's one thing people need to understand even i'm gonna say this right now coin this shit dragon ray gaming aka requaza this is what people want people want performance let's say let's let's say this the series s should be able to do performance mode or they should just do strictly performance but at lower quality strictly performance but at lower quality 30 fps greater quality but not the better quality if you know what i'm saying but it should always be quality or not quality, but it should always be performance it should always run smooth as butter get it out of here smooth as butter regardless who gives a shit the series s needs to have options quality performance you get both period point blank you get series x quality performance both as long as you have the option that way right there you can stop people from bitching that the series s is weak you know what i mean but then again it's always on the developers it doesn't matter for me it doesn't matter how the shit looks for if i had a series s it doesn't matter how the game fucking looks as long as it runs smooth as butter that's all that should matter because it's a series s it's weaker hardware you're not gonna get that shit like that's it you're not gonna get that shit and if somehow you do, good fucking job. Series S, performance, that's it. Don't worry about graphics. 
that's it. Series X, quality, performance. Boom, bottom line. However, like I say again, quality is subjective, period, point blank. As long as Minecraft exists, as long as any games exist, as long as Nintendo games exist, quality is subjective. Not everything needs to be pristine like Hellblade 2 and freaking quality games like phew, God of War. Even they have some mistakes, even those games have some mistakes. They're two different things. Quality is subjective. One person's opinion may not be someone else's. You guys got to get over that shit. All right. That's one thing about the Series X. They just have to, they nail the quality down for the next generation. That's, that's what they got to do, man. And this is coming from an Xbox dude, an Xbox dude. Yeah, I'm going to say that too. You know, I rock a lot of Xbox stuff, but this is just purely for Bethesda stuff. I go where Bethesda goes. That's it. Now, so to wrap all this up, this is going to be a 15 to 20 minute video. To wrap this shit up, 2023 is going to be make it or break it for a lot of Xbox fans. I'll play whatever. A lot of people, they've already done with Xbox, moved to PlayStation. They, they moved to where the games are, which is understandable. I moved to where the games are as well. I will be playing Nintendo. Maybe not as much. You know, you know how Nintendo gets down. They don't play that shit. And shout out to Did You Know Gamer for winning that lawsuit. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I followed it. I didn't cover it. Good job. Nintendo needs to stop that BS. For real. You're still one of my favorite game companies, but you're on that bullshit. But uh, yeah, make it or break it for Xbox, man. I'm not gonna say this for me, for a lot of people, it is. We shall see coming 2023. Because since they pushed everything back, everything is jumbling on together to one year. Because like I said, if you guys go back and look, I said the Xbox Series S in 2022, because they said originally 2022 was the year of Xbox. Everything got delayed, plans spread out, but it all knocks down into one year. And that's when they will cook. Like they said, let them cook. Let Xbox cook this year. Game Pass is a staple. It's going to bring the folks in. Then you just need the games. Throughout the year, they're going to be sprinkling games. Sprinkling games. The only thing I really hope for next year, I hopefully see Starfield. I, well, I'm going to see Starfield regardless. You know, we rock Starfield. Starfield is, I'm going to be the Starfield dude. We're going to rock Starfield day and night. Any other games avowed is a plus. Hellblade 2 is a plus. Even though I still got to play the first one, I'm having something. But if I see Hellblade 2, I'm going to be playing Hellblade 2 soon or Hellblade soon. And we shall see some new brand new games. So uh, stay tuned, people. There's a lot of stuff coming for Xbox. There's a lot of make it or break it, but it's just a general synopsis of what Xbox should really do. If you stick around with me fumbling my words and me actually making some content, hey, man, it is what it is. And stay tuned for some more new stuff. All right, y'all. Like, share, subscribe, and peace. Stay tuned for some more gaming and anime content. All right, y'all. I'm out. Ooh, man, it's going to be a doozy for this here, Xbox. Yeah, we'll see, people. We'll see.